right, we shall see how it works. Right, fantastic. All right, now if you you, you see the broadcasting uh, link at the top, so you can uh, actually use this link later on also for watching and rewatching this piece once again. All right, let me begin by um, delivering new ideas and new messages to you to improve to improve your pronunciation. Um, it is very important to understand that the English pronunciation that you are learning is a pronunciation not for beauty, but a pronunciation for communication. This means that you should be speaking mostly to achieve a particular effect on your audience, a particular, a particular effect on your interlocutor in such a manner that the audience and interlocutor interact with you, not just listen to you, not just, not, not just generally understand you, but they interact with you. This means the moment you say something, uh, a person who is just opposite to you at the table or in a, in a conference hall, they should be reacting to your ideas rather, to, rather than to individually uh, individual words that you pronounce. And this means that you need to work on this communication essence with your pronunciation rather than beauty. How to achieve this, uh, this, um, this most important part of your communication techniques? Because without that, you will hardly be able to reach the desirable effect with the audience. Very often in universities and schools, teachers spend a lot of time improving individual words. Like, for example, they would be giving you a poem as an ordinary poem, and they will tend to improve each particular word in a poem, each particular sound. Like, for example, I will take two lines from a poem. I saw a ship that sailed the sea. And then somebody starts pronouncing it, and then I'll be working on each individual smallest segment of your pronunciation. Like when you are, when you, when you are saying, for example, I... I would say I, and then he would say I, and then he would say I, 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 and then I saw, and then I will be teaching you to pronounce the sibilant S in the, in the, in the most correct way. And uh, the pronunciation of sibilance is a difficult matter. You can actually try right, try right now. And then you will see that probably it's, it's, it's not, it's not such a, such an easy thing to do because if you, if you tend to, uh, if you tend to, I want to show you, by the way, the screen, if I can, we shall see whether uh, I can show you uh, a special device that helps you uh, uh, improve your uh, the pronunciation of each, of each individual segments. Look at my screen. So uh, sometimes I'm using the analyzer, speech analyzer, and the speech analyzer helps me to tell me whether some individual sounds that I pronounce are correct or not correct. So I switch it on and it starts recording my voice. And so I'm saying, I saw a ship. Do you see this segment, which is very, very high? I'm saying, S -s 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 do you notice the high pitched sound at the top? It's S. So when I'm saying saw, my first syllable should be accompanied with just by this, uh, by this very, very strong high note. Because if I say, for example, it differently, not as saw, in that particular case, it will be, all, it will be correct. But if I say it differently, like saw, 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 so it doesn't show me the same picture. Now you can see it on the screen at this very moment. So saw had a very, very strong, had a very, very strong uh, high pitched frequencies. While in all, in all other cases, they were, it, it, it was not so. But it's very important to understand that this approach to pronunciation 
is probably only for professionals. And I wouldn't recommend you doing that because you will be wasting a lot of time trying to improve your individual sounds and you will hardly achieve fluency and, uh, and rapport, understanding with the audience. I rather suggest you doing something else, something different, rather than working on individual, on individual sounds. I ask myself a very general question. I'm saying, on the one hand, there is the system, and in the system, there is the explanation of how sounds should ideally sound or ideally be pronounced. On the other hand, there is the phenomenon meaning my understanding of how people understand me when I'm speaking. For example, I'm, uh, I may be using different standards when speaking to you, when speaking to my colleagues in the university, when speaking to the British audience, when speaking to the American audience, when speaking to the audience in Middle East or somewhere in Southeast Africa, I don't know. It will be, uh, it will be a very different kind of, of presentation. All right. Um, one secret is the following. First, we should learn to pronounce level tones, because in level tones, I will show you now what, what I mean, because in level tones, you tend to concentrate on one sound without any variation, and it is much easier than pronouncing a sound with lots of variation. Listen. I'm saying, go, go, see, it's difficult. But when I'm saying, go, 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 когда я с вами разговариваю таким образом, все мои звуки ровные, я практически не делал никаких усилий, чтобы произнести такой звук. И в результате мое произношение значительно упрощается, когда я говорю таким образом, Я не настаиваю, чтобы вы произносили э, английский, английскую речь таким способом все время. Это всего лишь упражнение. So I do not insist that you pronounce uh, everything that you say, you say in English in this specific manner. But you should learn to use this level contour, because this contour, if you introduce it, will take care of about 70% of what you say to people. 70%. And this 70% will be easier in terms, of, uh, in terms of correctness of pronunciation. Let me show you probably my presentation. And in that presentation, there are a couple of things that you would like probably to take a picture of. So uh, when you look at this scheme, you will notice that the word right, for example, can be pronounced with so many different contours. It can be pronounced with a low fall or with a mid fall, with a, with a very extended diapason, uh, or with a level tone. Try right now, without switching on your microphones, to pronounce the word right 10 times evenly. Right, 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 right. Попробуйте говорить таким образом хотя бы на протяжении двух, трех минут. И вы посмотрите, что это довольно сложно. И вы обратите внимание на то, что, в принципе, вам не очень сложно работать со звуками, когда вы говорите таким образом, потому что эти звуки как бы немножко обрубаются к концу. Нет необходимости как-то их менять в конце. А когда вы меняете этот звук, вы неизбежно меняете его сегментный рисунок и получаете акцент в этом месте. Ровный тон. Постарайтесь добиться максимально ровного, узкого тона, когда вы говорите. Если у вас это получится, то вы сможете применять этот тон очень часто в английской речи, просто на разных уровнях. So, this is the first exercise. The first, the first exercise is the ability to achieve a flat level, unchanged sound on one level, on one level. But then you may add two levels or three levels, and each level will be pronounced also evenly, 
Like, if I take a sentence, listen, how do you think we ought to start? How do you think we ought to start? Как вы думаете, как нам следует, как нам следует начать? Итак, I may, I may be saying it in the following manner. How do you think we ought to start? The first three parts of the sentence I pronounce with level tones. Level tones. I'm saying, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you? And then I suddenly jump down considerably. Think we, think we, how do you think we, how do you think we, how do you think we? And then I jump even further down. How do you think we ought to? Absolutely different sound, but also level, also level. And then comes the last sound where I need, the last word where I need to work on my pronunciation, actually. Start. So when I go straight, without jumping, without moving dynamically, I do not work too hard on my pronunciation. I can, use, I can just use schwa. Remember, I was telling you about schwa last time. So I'm using just a reduced, a strongly reduced vowel sound, and it is pretty easy. How, how do, how do, I imagine if I pronounce the word how in a very strong manner, I would be saying how, that's the case. You will notice that uh, all kinds of accents may appear in my pronunciation. If I start changing this vowel sound, this, uh, this word, how, 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 difficult. But if I make it level, I use schwa, I use reduced, re reduced vowel sound. As a result, my pronunciation of the word becomes almost ideal. Улавливайте идею. Еще раз по-русски. Это очень важно. Всякий раз, когда вы используете динамический контур, то есть когда вы поднимаетесь или опускаетесь, или еще какие-то выкрутасы делаете со своим голосом, на всех этих поворотах у вас инерция вас тащит в ту сторону, в которую вас, в которую, так сказать, в, в, вас обычно толкает ваш родной язык. Ваш родной язык. То есть вы начинаете говорить how, но вы не знаете, как закончить слово how. So you don't know how to finish the word how. As a result, at the end of this word, you are saying how. Ooh. Very often. How. All right. I'm saying don't finish. Just don't finish. Pronounce it at the level tone, with a level tone. As a result, nothing will change in your pronunciation. It will be flat and even and without any modulations. And it will be ideal. It will be perfect without an accent. How? Look, I'm just saying how, how, how. But if I'm saying how, I don't know what to do with this ooh at the end. Well, should it be e? or u or any or a eh. should it be how or how or how meaning you don't know all right say all right since i don't know how to pronounce this word okay i will cut the tail off as a result my how will continue to be good so how do i'm not instead of saying how do you how do you how do you spray how do you how do you I'm saying it, I'm using my level tone. Очень важно, запомним это, очень важно. Ровный тон, без всяких движений, вверх-вниз. Ровный тон. Отрубили хвост, отрубили в этом хвосте все, что, все, что может утащить вас в канаву. А в, в канаву вас утащит ваша русская или китайская инерция. Поэтому как только вы отрубили хвост, вам стало легко лететь. How do you... How do you... How do you think we ought to? And then at the end you say start, start. Here you can do the start, start. You can, meaning there is one single word in a sentence in which you actually uh, practice correct pronunciation. Everything else is just schwa, 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 schwa. Everything else is just neutral. Everything else is, is an absolutely 
simple and easy to and um, and easy to produce kind of pronunciation. So, uh, my dear friends and colleagues, I invite you very strongly to practicing these um, this kind of stepping scale kind of pronunciation, stepping scale. То есть нисходящая ступенчатая шкала. Почему это важно? Потому что в ступенчатой шкале 90% вашей речи — это нейтральное, нейтральное произношение, которое не может быть акцентным, оно все практически редуцировано. Of course, in that particular case, uh, when you are thinking about what to use as an example, you may be relying on, um, on great speakers, like, for example, Berkov, who, were, who used to be the speaker of the British Parliament, And uh, from time to time, it makes sense listening to these people, right, and enjoying their pronunciation. And uh, probably it makes sense now listening to him and seeing whether you can at all produce the same kind of variation practically in every place, in every turn. Listen. An address by a foreign leader to both houses of parliament is not an automatic right, it is an earned honor. Moreover, there are many precedents for state visits to take place to our country. For state visits to take place to our country. See, he's pronouncing almost everything with a level tone. For state visits to take place to our country. So this is, this is normal. Even such an emotional personality as John Berkov, and the, as the, speaker of the, the former speaker of the British Parliament, he's using the same technique. Which do not include an address to both houses of Parliament. That's the first point. The second point is in relation to Westminster Hall. In relation, relation to... When's Westminster Hall? So, again, three words are pronounced with a level tone and only one with a dynamic tone. So everything else is level, one is dynamic. So the rule is simple. Where you have the level tone, you don't have an accent. Where you have the dynamic tone, you do have an accent. Therefore, you can actually achieve the level where 90% of what you say is pronounced with a level tone. As a result, 90% of your speech will be accentless if you learn to do that. Просто мы научились все. Просто мы все считаем, что говорить с людьми надо эмоционально. А когда ты говоришь эмоционально, ты пытаешься донести до них множество разных оттенков. И что получается? В результате получается какая-то речь, наполненная акцентами. Но так иностранцы не разговаривают. Uh, I will show you now a fragment of, uh, of the Russian speaker who actually speaks like that, and you will see it clearly that he is just applying the Russian emotional intonation onto his speech. As a result, almost all of his sounds uh, are wrong. Almost all of his sounds are Russian because of inertia, because inertia, inertia drags him to a different kind of articulatory practices and the changes and uh, mars and spoils the whole of the of his effect okay listen to igor gaidar uh, i'm sorry in the presidential election of 1996 a case that was later dropped for lack of evidence so the third question then has to do with the from your perspective you are the one to answer them. <laughs> Well, I think you are strongly overestimating my uh, involvement in the practicalities of the election campaign of 93. Let's not you notice when he is using the neutral intonation, his sounds are good. But the moment he becomes emotional, his sounds become bad. When he is neutral, his sounds are good. When he is emotional, his sounds are bad. The practicalities of the election campaign of 93. Let's not uh, forget that... This is related to 93. Related to 93. He was almost ideal here in this particular case. When in, in this piece. Okay, then comes the emotional part. I was Deputy Prime Minister in charge of economic policy at the time. I never regarded myself as a big expert on the election campaign. 
Вы видите, он практически идеален здесь, несмотря на то, что у него никакого произношения нет. Он сузил диапазон, сузил, он у него узенький и ровный. И в результате вот в этом суженном ровном диапазоне ничего не меняется. Английское произношение у него остается, ну, практически идеальным. Практически. Of course, I was uh, the leader of the party list, but also I had to deal with the stress with uh, the legislation uh, from the elimination of the food subsidies to the elimination of the import subsidies, and uh, that really was in the center of my attention. I was prepared for the election campaign. I do remember that was some uh, episode. I do remember when there was some episode. То есть в тот момент, когда он начинает использовать русские интонации, I do remember when there was an episode. He, when he's saying that, the word do immediately becomes Russian. То есть это такой безопасный коридор. It's a safe corridor. Like when you are using level tone, narrow diapason, you are safe. The moment you make a step aside to the right side or to the left side, the whole of your phonetics spoiled. Uh, afterwards, when the, some kind of uh, scandal was connected with uh, this advertising come off, the level on which we discussed the issues, uh, we had some kind of consultants before, asked before. Had some kind of consultants, он говорит с русской интонацией, с русской интонацией и, соответственно, с русским произношением. We had some, process, some kind of consultants. В тот момент, когда, когда он выскакивает из этого узкого коридора, начинает плясать черти в языке. No general discussions, but I do not remember that any of the... Okay, so this is, uh, this is Igor Gaidar. Uh... Uh, прошу прощения, uh, меня было слышно в записи. Серьезно? Может быть, только нет, у меня нет, такое? Нет, все было слышно. Было, все было, было все слышно. Все было слышно. Okay, okay. Right. Лена Рикович, у меня к вам вопрос по поводу этого видео. Вот вы говорите, что когда переходим на русскую интонацию, у нас появляется акцент. Но uh -huh. ведь английская речь, она же тоже достаточно яркая. И, например, художественное чтение или театральные постановки, у Класс. них же тоже есть эмоциональная составляющая в их разговорной речи. Как yes. тогда избежать вот этого, когда мы хотим выразить какие-либо эмоции, но при этом как оставаться на уровне хорошего английского произношения? All right. I will tell you what you, what, what you need to do. Naturally, many people can be very emotional in English, and uh, they want to stay emotional very often. And in that particular case, you need to be a master. You need to be able to play with that uh, easily. But... Uh, If you want to speak without any mistakes in pronunciation, you tend to be neutral and your voice should be level. But if you want to express emotion, secondly, you definitely need to make sure that, uh, that the emotions that you express are, uh, are good and that they do, not, uh, they do not spoil the general effect. For this, you, need... I... you have. I want to show you one small episode related to to, the, to your question, Nastya, where you need to uh, where you need to train a lot. This is Benedict Cumberbatch, who works a lot on his intonations and for the for for the profound and deep expression when you're reading fiction, for example. In this particular case, he's uh, he's playing uh, the part of Smog in uh, in Hobbit. And it would be interesting to see the way he's actually doing it in the studio. And you probably, you've probably never, never heard or uh, uh, saw such practices as you will see uh, right now. So one moment. Uh, I don't remember whether I switched on my sound. Okay, once, once again. Ah, right. All right, listen. Well, thief. I smell you. I hear your breath. I feel your air. Where are you? Hmm? Where are you? I kill. Ever I please, and none can stop me. 
sorry. <laughs> you see, uh, the actor is doing a lot of work in order to, to achieve that high level of emotionality and expressivity. But you cannot jump over this neutral level. Most of you are non-professionals in acting and most of you are not non-professionals in communication. Therefore, in order to achieve this level, you first need to make the first step. And in the first step, you need to produce neutral intonations, neutral voice. And at this neutral voice, you will notice that your sounds will be unchanged. They will just be good. There won't be any emotional deviation. Uh, there will be any articulatory deviation caused by your emotion, which is important. Therefore, this is, uh, this is a necessary exercise for the achievement of great performance in public and in class. Um, many speakers, by the way, tend to remain... Oh, by the way, I, I, I thought to show you how Benedict Cumberbatch, for example, is practicing occasionally when he's, uh, when he's alone. So actors actually work on their pronunciation many times, and in many cases, it is just playing all sorts of stupid, so stupid schemes. Okay, let me listen. Let me switch it on for you, and you will see how Benedict Cumberbatch is employing all sorts of um, uh, image visualization techniques in order to achieve great, um, great level. Okay. Benedict Cumberbatch met a feminist lumberjack. Benedict Cumberbatch met a feminist... Oh, hello. <clears throat> you caught me doing my standard vocal warm-up exercises. Standard. It's a standard exercise for him, right? A standard warm-up exercise. So this means that if you want to achieve great level of, uh, 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 of rapport, of, of speaking to the public, you, you, you do it practically every day. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're here because I've got a question for you. Yes, you, you who aren't paying attention. Pay attention. I suppose I should explain. I am Benedict Cumberbatch, actor, and I'm teaming up with Amaze to fly you and a friend out to Los Angeles to attend the world premiere of my next student film, Avengers Infinity War, which, for those of you who don't speak American accents, is Avengers Infinity War. And seeing as, well, we'll be in LA at the same time, it's the perfect opportunity for us to meet for tea and delightful conversation. What will it be like to have tea with an actor, you ask? Well, I prepared a short monologue for you that should make things quite clear. And go, actor. I'm a little teapot. Yachenik. Yachenik. Short and stout. This is my handle, and this is my spout. Nosik, nosik. When I get all steamed up, hear me shout. Tip me over and pour me out. Release, and I'm back. Hi. It'll be exactly like. See. We can, uh, we assume that when actors are speaking, actors are most welcome to use a lot of emotional statements as they want. And uh, the images that they actually act on the screen. And very often we forgive them all sorts of pronunciation mistakes because we assume that this, these mistakes are dictated by the image that they're performing currently, right now, uh, on the stage. But very often, when you listen to, uh, to a university lecturer, for example, who on the one hand wants to remain, uh, remain neutral, but on the other hand, clear, he is using a great variety of intonations. But again, most of them, about 70% of what he's saying would be neutral level, and only a small, I don't know, 10% will be variation when he wants to address the public. Uh, у них там в Гарварде есть МФК. Можете представить Гарвард, Гарвардском университете, у них там тоже есть МФК. Сейчас я вам включу Гарвардское МФК. Uh, поприветствуйте своих американских коллег, которые сейчас вы там увидите на экране. Uh, ну, типа. Uh, я не помню, я эту лекцию принес или нет, но неважно. So you will, hear, you will see how uh, Michael Sandel, 
a brilliant Harvard University professor speaking, and you will notice that most of his intonations are neutral. Once again, neutral and level. Very good example for imitation. Listen. The memory and also the ideas of Adam Smith, the distinguished son of Kirkcaldy. And thinking about this lecture, my thoughts went back to when I studied economics as an undergrad. When I studied economics, Rona, видите? А в русском мы сказали, когда я изучал экономику, в русском языке мы так скажем, когда я изучал экономику, и во всех этих поворотах, ну представьте, что у вас машина, и вы не умеете ездить хорошо, вы едете хорошо, едете по прямой, по прямой ровной дороге. Как только вам нужно повернуть влево-вправо, вы начинаете делать ошибки, правда? Почему вы начинаете делать ошибки? Потому что вас инерция тащит туда сюда. Здесь ровно та же самая ситуация. То есть, когда вы не хотите делать ошибок, езжайте просто по прямой дороге. Вот и все. When I came across, uh, was first exposed to, under, uh, to economics, I was bedazzled by it. I loved its clarity and rigor. And I especially loved the idea that big questions of social and economic life could be answered, or so it seemed, without engaging in messy, seemingly subjective debates about values. That was an exhilarating promise. Economics beckoned and inspired as a value neutral. In this particular case, he is speaking, he is speaking to a big audience of his colleagues. Let's listen how he speaks to students uh, in Howard University, as I promised, okay. Those who wouldn't turn. Yes. Well, uh, I think that's the same type of mentality that justifies genocide and totalitarianism. Похоже на МФК, да? У них МФК, у нас МФК. Все примерно, примерно та же самая картиночка. In order to say, save one type of race, you wipe out the other. So what would you do in this case? You would... To... So what would you do in this case? Слышите? So what would you do in this case? Все тоны ровные, просто вообще все. To avoid the horrors of genocide, you would crash into the five and kill them? <laughs> Presumably, yes. You yeah. Okay, who else? It's a brave answer. Thank you. The brave answer. Thank you. Никакой эмоциональности. Все очень ровно. So this is this is the speech of the university professor. I can put uh, the very beginning of the lecture, play, play to you the very beginning of the lecture, you will see that mostly his intonation is the same. Until you notice that there is, off to the right, a side track. And at the end of that track, there's one worker working on the track. Your steering wheel works. So you can turn the trolley car, if you want to, onto the side track, killing the one, but sparing the five. Okay. And here we come to the second piece of advice that I want to give you in connection with good pronunciation. And it is related to how you create dynamism in speech. Because without dynamism, you cannot communicate. You want to deliver a certain idea to people. And since you want to deliver a certain idea to people, you need to explain to them uh, your message in the hierarchical way means some words are more important for you and for your audience, some words are less important for you and your audience. As a result, you want people to grasp that hierarchy, that scale of importance that you build for people. And naturally, if you want them to understand you very clearly, you wouldn't be giving them a lot of information, right? You will be giving them bits, small bits and pieces of information and uh, the scope of what you are giving to people should not be very wide. It should be narrow enough. Okay. How do you practice this? Let me uh, first open a couple of uh, slides to show you how you begin practicing uh, this reduced number of accents, reduced number of accents for the achievement of greater effect in communication. Let's take an ordinary text that I was quoting today already this morning. This is a text from, um, from a book 
by Amy Crombie, where he's speaking about the importance of um, uh, where he's speaking about the importance of using discourse markers. Somebody is using somebody's um, somebody's microphone is switched on. I will switch it off for everyone. Okay. Now, um, look. So you may be reading it in the following manner, with mistakes. In normal, friendly conversation, it is most important to avoid silence. Bad reading, poor reading. Instead, I say, I will concentrate only and exclusively on three words. Just three. Conversation, most, silence. Everything else will be level. Okay. I'm saying, in normal, friendly conversation, it is most important to avoid silence. So I'm reducing it to just three words. I can reduce it to just two words if I want. In normal friendly conversation, it is most important to avoid silence. I'm using the word important, or maybe two words. In normal friendly conversation, it is most important to avoid silence. I can read like that. You decide which part of the sentence should be strongly highlighted. And here comes a great question that you may ask me. How to highlight, how to emphasize in such a manner that I do not break the rules of English pronunciation. I say, the answer is very simple. It is, it boils down to the single word, rhythmicalize. 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 Произноси самую важную часть ритмически, как будто это стихотворение. Посмотрите, как будто это стихотворение. Та-та-та-та-та-та-та-та. Та-ра-та-та-та-та-та-та. Как будто это стихотворение. Вот и получается, что я даю вам сейчас шикарнейшую формулу сохранения практически безакцентного произношения. Первая часть, которая нейтральная, произносится с вами в ровном тоне, где большинство гласных — это нейтральные редуцированные шва, а там, где эмоционально, там ритмически, как стихотворение, вы бьете, как будто вы, э, как будто вы читаете стих. Посмотрите, как это реализуется здесь. In normal friendly conversation, it is most important to avoid silence. Видите? It is most important to avoid silence. And here comes a very important point. You should switch on your rhythmical feeling. Because without that rhythmical feeling, you cannot rhythmicalize. What is the rhythmical feeling? I say, I take, for example, a word combination, uh, like a beautiful man, right? Beautiful man. In the word combination, beautiful man, the first word consists of how many syllables? Beautiful, three, right? And the word man is only one syllable. But in your head, you must make them equal. They should be equal in pronunciation. I'm saying beautiful, Man, how do I achieve this equality? By extending N. I'm saying beautiful man. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, uh, subconsciously, I'm bringing them to the equal condition. In that particular case, I'll, I'll reach the necessary level of, of expressivity. That is very good for me. А когда я вот так скольжу по звуку, man, у меня не сильно много вариаций. Я не сильно пляшу, и поэтому, поскольку вариаций у меня не очень много, то и ошибок я не делаю э, практически совсем. Э, посмотрите. It is most important to avoid silence. Just listen to that. It is most important to avoid silence. та 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 В голове. та 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 And I can read the whole of this text almost like that, almost in the same manner. I'm saying in normal, friend, in normal friendly conversation, практически ровно, it is most important to avoid silence. I can read till the end of the sentence, just observe the way I level out and rhythmicalize. Listen very attentively. I'll be doing this and that occasionally in order to achieve this pronunciation. In normal friendly conversation, it is most important to avoid silence. If somebody volunteers a piece of information or some exciting news or puts forward an opinion or exclaims with surprise at something, 
An answer is just as necessary as when a question is asked. The answer may be purely formal and may convey little or no information, but it keeps the conversation going and prevents the, and prevents the discomfort of a pause. For someone who is still the learner of a language in which the conversation is being conducted, however, it is not easy to know what exactly ought to be said under these circumstances. Здесь столько ритма в том, что я сейчас читал. Ну, наверное, не знаю, процентов 40 фраз, которые я использовал, были подчинены практически поэтическому ритму. Посмотрите в конце, как трудно последнюю фразу произнести, казалось бы, без, без ошибок. It is not easy to know what exactly ought to be said under these circumstances. It's a very difficult phrase, right? And when you come upon this difficult phrase, the only way to jump over difficult words is the rhythm. Listen what I'm doing, and I'm doing it almost subconsciously, trying to achieve a very great level of rhythmicalization that makes it easy for me. It's not easy to know what exactly ought to be said under this, so even the whole sentence. For someone who's still the learner of a language in which the conversation is being conducted, however, somebody in which the conversation is being conducted, however, in which the conversation, in which the conversation, in which the conversation, in which the conversation, я не произношу the. А знаете, почему я не произношу the? Потому что для него ритмического места нет. There is no rhythmical place for the. In which the conversation. Я can't say, in which the conversation. Все, ритм сломался полностью. И я не могу произнести эту фразу без акцента. In which the conversation is being conducted, however. It's not easy to, it's not easy to know what exactly ought to be said under these circumstances. What exactly ought to be said. Ought to be said. Я не говорю ought to be said. Я говорю ought to be said. It's not easy to know what exactly ought to be said under these circumstances. And what to be said, 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 what to be said. So, um, in order to achieve this great ease in pronunciation, and as a result, the segment will be subordinated to your intonation and to your rhythm, as a result, will, con will continue to be correct not spoiled by your Russian tones, then your rhythm and your diapason and your leveling out of intonation will do this job very well. Then comes a very important, interesting point for comfort in reading and for comfort in speaking. And this comfort is in the pause, naturally. You should be making a pause where you want to make a pause. It's very important. Very often people say, where should I make a pause? Is it not dictated by some, some kind of rules? I say, probably yes, but in my particular case, I'm sharing with you the skill of uh, uh, using the kind of intonation where you control pauses and contours and not the text is dictating it to you. Listen. I will be stopping where I want to stop. I will be starting where I want to start. And in that particular case, you will not even notice that my reading is artificial one way or another. Okay. I'll be saying, in normal friendly conversation, it is most important to avoid silence. If somebody volunteers a piece of information, I can say like that, or I can say, If somebody volunteers a piece of information, or I can say, if somebody volunteers a piece of information, or I can stop after the word peace. If somebody volunteers a piece of information, I can stop after the word information. If somebody volunteers a piece of information or some exciting news, The most important thing is to achieve level tone whenever you stop. Because the moment you start using the curve, the dynamic intonation, you will inevitably make mistake in the segment. Your vowels and consonants will immediately transform into your natural native tongue. That's important. Okay, once again, at home, When you are practicing reading in front of the camera, before you switch on the camera, try to divide mentally 
your every sentence that you are pronouncing into two parts. One will be neutral, and the second part will be expressive, but expressivity will be achieved by rhythmicalization. By rhythmicalization. Do you get my point? So in all friendly conversation, it is most important to avoid silence. I'm saying it's, uh, the most important part is the end. Therefore, the first part I will read almost uh, running, while the second part will be pronounced with a rhythm. In normal friendly conversation, it's most important to avoid silence. I'll be reading it like that. Make sure that you, um, that you stop where, from your point of view, the word is most important for your communication. One more fragment that is highly important for understanding how to achieve a different variety of pronunciation that is very different from what you were taught at school or in the university. At school or in the university, each word was taught to you separately. You will go to the dictionary and you will notice that the word normal is pronounced as normal. The word friendly is pronounced as friendly. And then you will need to put together in your head the two pronunciations, right? You will have to say normal, friendly, normal, friendly. It is so difficult from my point of view. Very difficult because you will have hundreds of words in the text. Imagine that you will need to control hundreds of words and hundreds of syllables. Is it easy? No. From my point of view, if you are not a native speaker, you cannot achieve it. It's impossible. Well, as a result, I need to change my mentality. I need to change the way I control pronunciation by transforming words into chunks. Я слова превращаю в сцепление слов. I turn words into phrases. Words into phonetic words. Like this. Instead of saying normal friendly, I'm saying normal friendly. Normal f- normal f- Вы слышите? В моей голове normal f- это слово. Вы знаете такое слово normal? F? Конечно, вы не знаете такого слова normal. F? Но в моей голове это слово. То есть я знаю, как его произнести. И normal f- friendly. Вот я так его произношу. И normal friendly. Я сказал и normal, f, а потом сказал friendly. Но слово friendly легче произнести, правда же, чем friendly. Попробуйте. Try right now to pronounce the word friendly and to pronounce the word friendly. What is more easy? Friendly is easier, right? Friendly is easier rather than friendly. Friendly is difficult because you need to say friendly. You will be spitting out actually, and there will be well, well, people will actually stay away from you. Therefore, I'm saying in normal, f- good, in normal friendly, in normal friendly. So in normal f- becomes a separate word. In normal friendly conversation, it's most, it's most, it's most, it's most, it's most, it's most, it's most becomes a separate phonetic word. It's most, not it is most, but it's most, it's most. And you should teach your hearing, your perception to perceive these phonetic words separately. Нужно приучить свой слух воспринимать эти необычные куски, которых не найдешь ни в одном словаре, как как самостоятельные единицы, которые хранятся в вашей памяти, как готовые. Посмотрите, например, в середине текста. Like, look what is happening in the middle of the text. Just as necessary. Just as necessary. Just as necessary. I just remember this. Remember the whole of it. Remember together with pronunciation of that. Just as necessary. And since I can achieve this kind of ease in remembering it, in articulating it, then I'm using it likewise in my speech and as a result, achieve very great results. So uh, I would expect that in your, uh, in your next exercise, when you are preparing after this lecture, when you are recording another piece from this lecture, you will make a very serious addition to what you are doing in pronunciation, where a considerable part will be broken, a considerable part of the text will be set apart as neutral, as level, rhythmicalized. And the second part 
will be strongly rhythmicalized as a poem. Take any text that you are reading and try to read it as a poem. Begin by exercising this kind of rhythm whenever you're reading the Russian text or the English text. It is most important. Okay. Next uh, comes a very interesting point and very important point about what sort of uh, uh, what sort of examples or models to use when you want to achieve this kind of pronunciation. Naturally, I'm choosing for myself uh, the speakers who, from my point of view, are that emotional and who will teach me to rhythmicalize and who will teach me to, uh, to make the greatest and most important emphasis that I can pick up from. There is a very interesting point in history when one of the speakers appeared to be um, a fantastically great rhetorician. This was Winston Churchill, who actually commanded the nation and uh, whose, uh, his influence on the British nation was, 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 was great, marvelous. And then later on, I noticed that, that another British politician, the current prime minister, Boris Johnson, he's idolizing Winston Churchill. And it's not only that he's idolizing him, it's most important that in addition to idolizing him, he's trying to repeat his intonations and to repeat his way of speaking in spite of the fact that both of them are British. Well, well Winston Churchill was speaking, about, was speaking about 80 years ago, and naturally his, his pronunciation was a little bit different at that time. But now Boris Johnson thinks it is possible to apply and the same kind of intonations. Okay, let me play first to you, Winston Churchill. Notice the way he is emphasizing words and try to assess, to estimate whether you yourselves can do the same. Can you pick up something? Can you steal something from, from, uh, from Winston Churchill for your own case, for your own pronunciation? And I will tell you that many, many of my students do that and quite successfully. And it's, uh, it's, it, it, it becomes a very good case for, for improving their pronunciation. Okay, first... I will play to you Winston Churchill, then we'll make a small pause, and then we shall listen to Boris Johnson. And you will see how Boris Johnson, one way or another, is imitating Winston Churchill. Okay, first comes, uh, first comes Winston Churchill. Uh, okay, I think it is this one. Right. Um, I'm not quite sure I switched on the sound. I have to do it again once again. Right. Without a doubt that the fate of Holland and Belgium, like that of Poland, Czechoslovakia and Austria, will be decided by the victory of the British Empire and the French Republic. As the uh, Nazis look out tonight, from their blatant, clattering, panoplied Germany, they cannot find one single friendly eye in the whole circumference of the globe. Not one. The great English-speaking republic across the Atlantic Ocean makes no secret. All right, this was Winston Churchill. Let us see Boris Johnson. Is he doing the same sort of stuff now, today, in modern times? Never in the field of human conflict has so much been owed by so many to so few. And at that point, he absolutely has you, because he's using these very, very clear English, Anglo-Saxon words we all know. And within those concepts of so much, so many, and so few, is concealed a huge wealth of emotion. So much democracy, free speech, the whole European civilization. So many, everybody who depends on the outcome of the battle, not just in Britain, but in Europe, America, around the world. So few, he's talking about the, the fighter pilots. So he's He's, he's absolutely brilliant at... And I don't know whether you notice that much of his speech ends, or many of his sentences actually end, with a falling tone. 
So he's speaking practically like that most of the time. He's not using any variation. He's saying as if he's actually sending somebody away all the time. Go away. Go away. Go away. Leave the room. Leave the room. Leave the room. Practically every sentence in both speakers, Winston Churchill and Boris Johnson, and like that. And for Russian speakers, it is a very, uh, it's very improper kind of pronunciation, very improper kind of speaking, and uh, you're not in the habit of doing that. But I recommend you strongly to practice it and to try and finish every sentence and every chunk of speech that you're using in the falling tone. And as a result, this will be the only uh, most powerful, very often used by the English speakers, kind of, um, kind of uh, cadence at the end of the sentence that will be appreciated, greatly appreciated by your audience. All right, um, one more thing to say about, about connection and about dynamism. As I said, and I will keep repeating it many times, when you read or speak, uh, speak out, you are doing it not for the sake of generally and aesthetically impressing the public, although you can do that. If you want to impress the public, you will be using all sorts of contours and intonations and so on and so forth, but you are creating a communicative message. And for the, for, for the creation of the communicative, communicative message, your speech must be smooth. How to achieve this smoothness? Because in, in, in Russian or in Chinese or in English, there will be different kinds of connections. And this dynamism will be different. It's like, you know, like a dance. People want, uh, uh, want to dance as if they're, they want to speak as if they're dancing uh, tango. Uh, I think I will show you just a small piece. Uh, and uh, and this, is, uh, this is very interesting because... Uh, very often we, we misunderstand that uh, speech, in fact, should be, uh, should be like tango. And in speech, you should achieve the same ease as you are achieving in dancing a tango. Is any one of you dancing tango from, from time to time occasionally? Do you dance? It doesn't matter waltz or tango. I want to show you just a very, very small piece in order to express, in order to give you a kind of a metaphor or allegory about this smoothness of speech. This is a tango danced by an old man and a young woman. And it's interesting to see how they do this uh, smoothly. Uh, see and listen. you and this lady is your text is your speech let us see how the old man you the speaker can deal with the text the young lady I showed you just a very, 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 very small segment to just to give you an idea of the speech that should be very dynamic in order to create the, the necessary effect. And this means that very often you should be practicing your speech as you are practicing singing, probably, or uh, practicing or well, recitation of poems. And then naturally, you may ask me a question, what sort of material will be the best for the creation of this smoothness? for the creation of this dynamism of speech. And I will tell you that probably quite unexpectedly, a very good tech, a very good example for that is the English Bible, the English Bible of the 17th century. You may be quite surprised just to hear that, but um, in many English schools and also in the universities, uh, we use the Bible very often as an excellent phonetic exercise. 
Let me show you and explain why the English Bible is a very good example for that. Because the English Bible is actually um, used, it, it, it's, a, it's a text that was uh, specially written to be read in churches, in the stone buildings. So as a result, you need to read this text as if it were the text read and pronounced in the stone building. So this means that I should somehow prolong the end of the phrase and bring it over to the next phrase, like in a song. So this creates the so-called sing-song effect in singing, like this. Instead of saying, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, I should say, in the beginning, God, see, I'm connecting. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You see, I'm connecting each phrase by prolonging the final syllable. I'm prolonging the final syllable and then jumping over and flying over and diving into the next phrase gradually. And I can read the whole of it in this manner. As a result of this sing-song effect, I can practice the smoothness of communication. Listen, I can read the whole of it. Or just a couple of paragraphs. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Я фактически не отрываю карандаша от бумаги. Понимаете? And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Научитесь произносить фразы, не отрывая карандаша от бумаги. А дальше интересный идет момент. Третий. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Let me tell you that I am prohibiting you to dramatize this phrase. So you are not imagining that God actually pronounced these words, because you can't imagine the words of God, right? Therefore, these words are as if said by, the, uh, by, the chrono by, by, by somebody who is producing the chronologically important phrase, who is a teller, who is, who is a storyteller. Therefore, I will be, I'll be saying it as if I am retelling what actually happened. I will say, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. If I dramatize, I would say it like that. And God said, <clears throat> let there be light. And there was light, which is stupid from my point of view, right? Because I can't possibly imagine how God would be saying that particular phrase, right? And therefore, instead of that, I would say, and God said, let there be light. И он сказал, да будет свет. Не то, чтобы и он сказал, да будет свет. А, и он сказал, да будет свет. Я пересказываю, понимаете? Я пересказываю. А раз я пересказываю, я не драматизирую. А раз я не драматизирую, значит, все должно быть ровненько. This creates the necessary skill of smoothing out my speech, making it very smooth, which is not an easy thing to do. You, are, you need to practice it many times. You can find this, or you can either make a picture of this, of this text right now, just photograph this text from the screen, and, and try it at home, and you will see how you will do it, imagining that, uh, that uh, it is pronounced in the stone building. And this is very important to achieve this smoothness. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Look at the way the snoring sound, ng and m, are prolonged, achieving this desirable Sing song effect. Okay, this is this is highly important to achieve this smoothness, smoothness and rhythmicality and neutrality, because they are the greatest controllers of your segment. So once again, this the segment is the pronunciation of individual sounds, while the segment is completely 
and fully subordinated to intonation. Intonation can change your segment completely. Therefore, if your intonation and rhythm are strong enough, they can easily, without any difficulty, change your, uh, change your pronunciation without, without any difficulty. Uh, and uh, this means that if you are in control of rhythmicality, then you are in control of your segment. All right, so try it home uh, many times to achieve this kind of smoothness in, uh, smoothness in uh, rhythmicalization of your speech. But naturally, once again, I keep repeating and I keep saying many times again that you will need to do something with your mouth and with your lips and with your cheeks in order to, uh, to be in full control physically also with what you are doing. And in that particular case, uh, I'm, also, I'm always giving you all kinds of exercises. And this time, I once again will give you another exercise. And you may have a look at this, at this guy who is, um, who is actually recommending some sort of stuff to improve the physical condition of your mouth and of your throat. Uh, there are plenty of exercises like that in the internet. This is one of them. Let's listen and maybe you'll, you, you will choose some interesting um, instruments, devices or instructions from this person for your own self. All right, watch him and try to see whether it is applicable to you. <laughs> Clear and precise speech can help you to communicate your ideas so that your message is more easily understood. Using a toothbrush while speaking forces you to work the muscles of articulation and helps you to create space in the mouth for clear vowels. Take a toothbrush and use it to brush the chewing surface of the molars on one side of the mouth. While you're doing this, Molars, коренные зубы. Берете щеточку и чистим коренные зубы. Say this phrase several times, aiming to pronounce it as clearly as possible. Sarah Perry was a veterinary nurse who had been working daily at an old zoo in the deserted district of the Territory. Sarah Perry was a veterinary nurse who had been working daily at an old zoo in the deserted district of the Territory. But you will have to do it with a toothbrush, right? You just take a toothbrush and, and see whether you can do that. Take the toothbrush out of your mouth and say the phrase once more. Feel the extra space in your mouth and notice how much harder you're working with your lips and tongue to form the words. Sarah Perry was a veterinary nurse who had been working daily at an old zoo in the deserted district of the territory. So you are speaking as if there is a toothbrush in your mouth, and we you try to achieve the same kind, of, the same kind of effect. Now say the phrase one more time, making the movement slightly smaller and more efficient, but still aiming for clarity. Sarah Perry was a veterinary nurse who had been working daily at an old zoo in the deserted district of the territory. Practice this in the morning or when you're getting ready to go out. Sarah Perry was a veterinary nurse who had been working daily who had been working daily at an old zoo in a deserted district. Who had been working daily at an old zoo in a deserted district of the territory. All right. So this is a, so there may be plenty of exercises like that that you can be using during the day, and these exercises. Uh, if we rely on what I said today, can be broken down into just three big blocks. The first block, as I said to you in the beginning of this lecture, is uh, learning to produce neutral level sounds. And even try to speak like, like a priest in the church very often. So when I'm talking to you like that, it's very important that people actually try to understand every word that I'm saying. Right. It's, uh, когда я говорю по-русски, я могу практиковать ровные тоны. 
и это произношение очень хорошо нам знакомо. Мы слышали эту речь много раз. Что за бред, скажете вы? Я скажу, это не бред, это просто ровные тоны, больше ничего, ровные тоны. А знаете, почему в церквях используют ровные тоны? Потому что боятся интерпретировать. То есть интерпретировать нельзя. Это Священное Писание, надо произнести все ровным тоном, ничего не интерпретируя, понимаете? Любой контурчик маленький, любой маленький контурчик, он есть интерпретация. So you try to produce the level tone. There's block one, block two, rhythmicalization. You try to achieve the most important skill of rhythmicalizing your speech. Смотрите, of rhythmicalizing your speech. Я это делаю практически, автоматически. Because I need to achieve the ease in emphasizing pieces. The, смотрите, the ease at emphasizing pieces of my talk. Это тоже ритм. Я как бы отдельное словечко каждое произношу так, чтобы оно равнялось предыдущему. All right. And the third piece is we continue uh, achieving the great uh, level of clarity in your mouth using the uh, ordinary hygiene exercises, гигиенические упражнения, hygiene exercises that, that will improve the general effects of your speech. All right. So I want to finish at it today. I hope it was useful. And uh, if you can achieve that, something that I was recommending you today during this lecture, there will be a huge progress in how you recite poems. I will be, uh, I'll be, I'll be looking forward to how you'll be reciting your texts from this lecture and on. Because today I gave you a very important fragment of, uh, fragment of phonetic theory that is highly important for the improvement drastically the whole of your pronunciation. Something that I recommended to you actually can be written, uh, can be explained in five or six manuals, and I just squeezed it into a small lecture. Therefore, you are, st you, you are actually greatly benefiting by it today, because uh, I simply shared with you the results of my uh, years and years of study and learning of this material, and I'm just giving it to you in a, in a highly digested manner, as I'm giving it to my small, small child who was just born. All right, my dear friends, it was a pleasure seeing you today. I hope uh, you profited by that, and I wish you the very best. I hope to see you next time. Thank you very much for being with me today. This was Mark, the professor at Moscow State University. Bye bye. Well, thank you.